It's Thursday, April 7th, and this is your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski, and today we have the latest local news, and later, since it's Thursday, a look at the front pages of our HAN newspapers this week. We'll also be talking about our Wishes in Flight campaign with Make-A-Wish Connecticut. That's coming up later on. And of course, Rob joins us for Sports and Weather, and Donald Ng will take a look back on this day in history. But first, on to today's news. A rabbit chewing on electrical wires is the apparent cause of a Wednesday morning fire in Stratford on Barnum Avenue that forced two families out of their homes. Stratford Fire Marshal Brian Lampart said firefighters were called at about 8.20 yesterday morning to a two-family home at 2074 Barnum Ave. The fire was reported as an appliance fire, and Lampart said crews found significant smoke coming from a window on the first floor. Firefighters said the fire was caused by a rabbit belonging to a child in the first floor apartment chewing through wires behind the stove. The wire sparked the fire behind the stove and gutted the kitchen, he said, and left extensive damage in the first floor apartment. Lampard said two children who were getting ready to go to school at the time of the fire were inside. The children, an adult, and two rabbits in the first floor, as well as three people in the second floor apartment, escaped without injuries. Firefighters had the fire under control in about 35 minutes. However, the building was uninhabitable as power was cut to the entire area. The building's condition is being evaluated by town building officials, and the families are looking elsewhere for accommodations. And in other news today, a woman's ex-boyfriend has been arrested after allegedly breaking into the victim's Shelton home and physically assaulting her and then hiding from police in the Housatonic River. On Wednesday at about 11.20 in the morning, officers were called to Howe Avenue for a dispute in a backyard. When they arrived, they discovered a 23-year-old woman seriously injured and lying on the ground. She told officers she was in her home with a male friend when 29-year-old Jesse Smith, an ex-boyfriend, broke into her house wearing a bandana on his head and dragged her down the stairs and out into the backyard. The victim reported once in the yard, Smith struck her in the head several times and slammed her to the ground. He then fled the area. The victim was transported to St. Vincent's Hospital with serious but non-life-threatening injuries. Shelton patrol units, detectives, and canine units from Shelton and State Police canvassed the downtown area. After a lengthy search, Smith was located hiding in the Housatonic River. He was arrested and charged with home invasion, assault, and disorderly conduct. He's scheduled to appear in court today. And Stanford police are in pursuit of a suspect in a bank robbery at a People's Bank on Shippen Avenue and have tracked the suspected getaway car to an apartment complex on Cortland Avenue. According to reports, Stanford police are looking for a gray Mazda 6 with New York plates and apartment at the Kingswood complex at 59 Cortland Avenue. Police have dispatched a canine unit to the complex in hopes of tracking the suspect. The call for the holdup came in at about 8.55 this morning from the People's Bank branch. The suspect is a white male in his 60s or 70s who is carrying a green Rexon bag. Rexon is a commercial office building owner in Stamford, including Landmark Square. Police say that the suspect mentioned that he had a weapon during the holdup, but none was displayed. A Newtown Middle School teacher was charged Wednesday after he was found carrying a gun at school. The Hartford Current reports that officers were called to the school by officials at about 9 a.m. who said science teacher Jason Adams had come to school with a concealed firearm. Security personnel detained him at the time. After an initial investigation by police and the school district administration, Adams, who has a valid pistol permit, was charged with possession of a weapon on school grounds. School officials said that Adams, a science teacher at the school, was placed on leave pending the results of their investigation. Police said that Adams had also violated a school policy. And in other news, an investigation into a suspected major seller of heroin in the area resulted Thursday in the seizure of more than 400 bags of heroin and three arrests. Based on an investigation, detectives from the statewide Narcotics Task Force Southwest office obtained three arrest warrants for 27-year-old Sylvester Edward. Edward was stopped in his car by detectives, and police said his passenger, Michael Ross, was also detained at that time. Police then raided Edward's Levin Street home, where they said Edward was living with his girlfriend and four children. There, police seized 469 bags of heroin, 350 grams of raw heroin, and 40 grams of marijuana, along with packaging materials, scales, and a 38 caliber ammunition. 
Subsequently, Ross was arrested as well as his girlfriend, 29-year-old Tanisha Edwards. And switching gears now, we're going to throw it over to Rob Adams for a look at the forecast. Rob? All right, Kate. Good morning, everyone. We'll dive right in with a chance of showers. If you've looked outside, then you know that chance is pretty solid. Showers and possibly a thunderstorm this afternoon and a high near 60. The wind, there's your problem. From the south, from 16 to 18, gusting up to 34. And there will be plenty of this rain to tonight we go more of the same showers possibly a thunderstorm before 10 then a chance of showers after with a low near 41 wind again out of the southwest now from 9 to 14 to Friday it's a slight chance of showers we're down to 20 percent mostly cloudy and 48 for the high but the wind stays pretty strong out of the west from 10 to 13 Friday night partly cloudy and 31 we're gonna bundle up again to Saturday get this a chance of snow before noon. That's what it says here on the screen. Then a chance of rain and snow between noon and 3 p.m. Blame the National Weather Service. Do not blame me. Snow likely after 3. Less than one inch possible, just enough to make you kind of shake your head. High 45, however, to Saturday night. More snow. One to two inches we're talking about. Mostly cloudy and 25. Sunny and 42 for Sunday. Most a chance of rain after one, mostly cloudy, high 51 for Monday and to Tuesday, more showers and 57. It takes me to Wednesday to get you mostly sunny and 54. I just got nothing, folks. Around the area, Weston's got 56, Ridgefield has 56, Shelton has 56. I'll cry and throw it back to Kate. All right, thanks so much, Rob. We're going to step out for a break. When we come back, Donald Eng joins us to take a look back on this date in history. Rob has the latest sports news, and we have some more headlines coming up after this. Had a sports injury or a slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast without an appointment. Biking, golf, tennis, soccer, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care open Monday through Saturday in the I Park building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com. That's CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Like them on Facebook. More than 50 years, Triple S has been Fairfield County's expert service for carpet, upholstery, and drapery cleaning. We provide the best in repairs and in-depth restoration, understanding fabrics and how to properly clean and restore them. Our staff will come to your home to clean your wall-to-wall -wall carpet to perfection. We can also pick up your fine carpets and bring them to our facilities. With locations in Norwalk, Stamford, and Stratford, Triple S will get the job done fast, big or small. At Triple S, you can count on our people as well as our cleaning. Find us at TripleSClean.com or 203-847-8000. Alberta Londano Professional Painting, Wallpapering, and Carpentry has been serving Fairfield County for over 20 years. Based in Norwalk, Alberto takes pride in his work by offering you only the best quality service and products. Call Alberto today to get a free estimate and be one step closer to a new and exciting home makeover. 203-866-9635. I'm John Kovach. I'm a newspaper editor. I'm a high school football coach. I'm a television presenter. And I want you to love fishing as much as I do. Tune into Yankee Fisherman Thursdays at 1 on the HAN Network. It's like going to the tackle shop without leaving your office. When it comes to local entertainment, we've got it all. From movies, local artists, etiquette, and more. Watch HAN Arts and Leisure every Thursday at 2 on the HAN Network. We're back on your coffee break on the HAN Network, and it's time to throw it over to Donald Eng to take a look back on this day in history. Don. Well, Kate, on this day, April 7th, a legend finally got his due. But first, we're going to go all the way back 
1906, Mount Vesuvius erupts and destroys the city of Naples. Uh, in addition to the eruption in 79 CE that destroyed Pompeii and Herculaneum, Vesuvius had earlier destroyed several Bronze Age towns, and since that 79 eruption, Vesuvius has erupted at least 42 more times, the most recent being in 1944, destroying the villages of San Sebastiano al Vesuvio, Massa di Soma, Ottaviano, and San Giorgio di Cremano. Uh, just a thought. Italian. <laughs> I'm just thinking, hey, I, I was you didn't see me practicing, but uh, just a thought. You might want to stop, you might want to stop building towns right under the volcano. Uh, 1953. IBM unveils the IBM 701 electronic data processing machine, IBM's first commercially available scientific computer. Not exactly successful, they sold 19 of them. It's, 73, it's 72 three-inch vacuum tubes gave it a memory capacity of about 9,200 bits, or 9K, which is less than one one-hundredth of a meg. To 1963, at age 23, Jack Nicklaus becomes the youngest golfer ever to win the Masters Tournament. 23 years later, Jack would become the oldest golfer to win the Masters Tournament, and by the way, his putting stance still looked pretty much the same. And finally, now we go to 1970 for this. I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> the winner is John Wayne in two <laughs> If I'd have known that, I'd have put that patch on 35 years earlier. <laughs> that, of course, was John Wayne winning his only acting Academy Award for his performance as Rooster Cogburn in Henry Hathaway's True Grit. Wayne appeared in more than 150 movies in the course of his career. He had previously been nominated for 1949's Sands of Iwo Jima and 1960's The Alamo, which he produced, directed, and starred in, also got a Best Picture nomination. The other nominees that year, John Voight and Dustin Hoffman for Midnight Cowboy, Richard Burton as King Henry VIII in Anne of the Thousand Days, and Peter O'Toole as Arthur Chipping in Goodbye, Mr. Chips. But the day belonged to John Wayne. That is your look back in history, and I am Donald Ng. All right. Thanks so much, Don. Well, getting back to a little more news today and some good news from the Easton Courier. An elderly Newtown man who had been missing since yesterday morning was found yesterday evening at about 8 o'clock at night on Eden Hill Road in Easton, just over the border from Newtown. Easton Sergeant William Spencer said that police found him with the help of a citizen in town who located him safe and sound. Spencer said the man was found in the woods. He had first been reported missing at about 1.30 yesterday afternoon after having last been seen around 11.30 in the morning. Easton and Newtown police were assisting in the search by state police helicopter, but you can get more on that story at EastonCourier.com. Time to throw it over to Rob Adams now for a Nutmeg Sports Update. Rob? All right, thanks, Kate. Hi, once again, everyone. Let's dive into sports. A lot to get to. First, before all the scores, from the Wilton Bulletin yesterday, Tim Murphy writes that after 15 years behind the bench, including the last 11 as head coach, Brett Amaro is stepping away from the Wilton High Boys hockey program. In a quote, the coach said, there were many, many reasons that led to the very difficult decision to resign. It is not what my heart wanted to do. He then went on to say, the reason for my resignation lies within the many peripheral components of coaching that lie below the sea. Amaro's teams finished with an 83-142 and 6 record in his 11 seasons as head coach. Wilton qualified five times for the state tournament and three times for the FCAC playoffs. You can bet we'll have much more on that next week on Nutmeg Sports. We had a marquee early season matchup in boys lacrosse as New Canaan hosted Fairfield Prep at Dunning Field. Let's check out the highlights from yesterday as seen right here on the HAN Network. What had been largely a clear and comfortable day has turned a little darker and gloomier as we're at Dunning Field in New Canaan for boys lacrosse on the HAN Network. Good afternoon, everyone. Jackson Appelt down low. He'll go behind the net. Swindell out in front. Score. Who was that I talked about as we got underway? O'Connell, 1-0. 
with rain expected, not quite yet, but still on the way. And the Rams score with Clayton Burt making it a 3 0 game. They go back behind with six. Out in front, Swindell. Bingo. There's an answer for you 5 2. Exactly what the prep did not want to have happen. You finally get a little bit of momentum going on offense, and you give up an easy one to New Canaan. First half, scoring much less of it here in the second quarter. We had seven goals in the first. Now we have a second one, and it's 5-4. Hard work, they say, pays off, and that's the case for Zavoka. Lights on here at Dunning Field, and O'Connell makes it a two-goal game once again. Putting on the brakes, Burt. Got a man draped all over him. He stopped, looked like he was going to fire, and oh. sent it wide. Now trying for another opportunity. O'Connell and bounces it home. O'Connell in the perfect spot. Thought it was a totally blown opportunity there by, for New Canaan. And he was in the right spot at the right time before the ball was able to uh, slip out of bounds. Picks it up and sh slams it home. Coming down to 10.35 to go. And they score again. That was Savoka to make it 8-7. Smith between defenders. Gets a good look. Hits off the post. I mean, not only one, but two. Double the fun. <laughs> off, the, off the left post, then off the crossbar, and then down. That was a great call by the refs. 55 to go. Here it comes, on net and the save made, Morris. Morris will go behind the net. The New Canaan Rams are in great shape with two. They will walk it out with one and it's over. <laughs> and the Rams rightly rushing to their goalie, congratulating him on a fantastic game. And there you have it, the Rams getting the 8-7 win over the Jesuits. Ryan O'Connell had a hat trick. Kyle Smith scored twice for New Canaan. Rams goalie Drew Morris was outstanding in the cage, stopping a point-blank shot with 45 seconds to go. Morris finished with 13 saves. New Canaan 2-0. Fairfield Prep drops to 1-1. So many scores to get to. Let's roll through them right now. Another boys lacrosse score. It was Staples over Danbury 11-5. Greenwich over Cheshire in girls lacrosse 10-6 to baseball, New Canaan with a 3-0 win. And, you know, we don't like reporting these kinds of scores, but it's an unfortunate reality. Staples 28, Central 1 in baseball. You also had Ward over Brookfield as Danny DeBartolomeo drove in 4. Norwalk by 5 over Bethel. Trumbull, Newtown, West Hill, McMahon, and Darien all with wins in baseball. Switch over to softball now, and you have East Haven taking care of Stamford 9-0. Hannah Hutchison drove in both runs as St. Joseph knocked off Barlow 2-0. Norwalk, Newtown, Brookfield, Ward, and Wilton over New Fairfield 9-2. The others all with nice wins. Moving over to boys tennis now, you've got New Canaan taking care of Stamford 7-0. Norwalk by Trinity Catholic 6-1. In the Ridgefield-Ludlow match, Drew Warren and Jamie Crawford rallied for a 1-6-6-3-7-6-7-4 tiebreak win over Ludlow's Justin Eng and Kieran Barker. Also staples over Trumbull 6-1 and Ward shuts out Central. Now to girls tennis. Greenwich over St. Joseph, 7-0. New Canaan gets a 7-0 win over Stanford as freshman Megan Mitchell shot. That's actually, that's from girls golf, excuse me. New Canaan over Stanford, 7-0. Staples with a win. Ward, Darien, and Ludlow, the other scores. Now to girls golf, as I started to say. And it was New Canaan getting a win over Wilton at Silvermine. Megan Mitchell with a 40. Greenwich with a win, as well as Trumbull by 19 over Darien. Finally to boys volleyball, Ridgefield shuts down Trumbull. Fairfield over St. Joseph, and Darien also over New Canaan. Now on the schedule, it's rather big, can't read it all, but let me put it to you this way. We were scheduled to have girls tennis today as Fairfield Ludlow was to host Darien. The match is now postponed due to weather until tomorrow, and so many events now are being postponed. I just saw Massac and Staples is postponed in baseball. 
The most likely thing to get played today would be boys and girls lacrosse as well as volleyball. So let me read you those games. Trumbull at St. Joseph and boys lacrosse, Massac and Fairfield Ward, Ridgefield home for Stanford, Central at McMahon. From girls lacrosse, you've got Stanford at McMahon, West Hill hosting Ward, Ludlow at Darien, St. Joseph at New Canaan, Staples at Danbury, and Greenwich taking on John Jay of New York up in Cross River, New York. Finally, to boys volleyball, Newtown at Danbury, and Norwich Free Academy at Darien. Those are the things that are most likely to take place today. Baseball, softball, tennis, golf, all will likely be postponed because as you look out the window, Kate, it's just not the prettiest of days. So with sports, I'm Rob Adams. We're off for a couple of days right yes. now. Next game is Monday, and even that looks like it might be dicey, Kate. We'll see what happens. Okay. All right, April showers, Rob. All exactly. right. Well, we're going to step out for a break. When we come back, we're very excited. We're going to be talking about our Wishes in Flight campaign with Make-A-Wish Connecticut, and we're going to tell you how you can help. So stay tuned. That's coming up right after this. It's time to come back to hometown banking, where people are taken into account, not just balances, where community comes first, a place where there's more than one kind of interest, where automation will never replace consideration. Where they not only know your name, they know your dog's name too. It's time to expect more. It's time to bank well. Bank smart. Bank local. Bank well. For over 25 years, Mike Sizzik Painting and Wallpapering has been the name to know for residential and commercial properties in Fairfield County. He uses only the top brands, including Benjamin Moore, for impeccable preparation and lasting quality. Call Mike now and receive $500 off any job over $7,000. Mike is currently accepting reservations for spring, so call him today at 203-770-8869 or 203 203- 972-3310. For your custom painting, finishing, and staining needs, it's Mike Sizzik. Walter Stewart's Market in New Canaan is your time-saving local shopping destination for the best of spring. Find many of your favorite products, from great specials on everyday items to the freshest organic produce, artisanal cheeses, and grass-fed steaks. Chop off your knives to be sharpened. Grab a beautiful bouquet of spring flowers and stop in next door for a wine tasting. Plus, their personal staff is always ready to lend a helping hand. So stop in to Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, today, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. At the Sylvan Learning Center of Darien, experienced teachers and personalized academic support equals superior results. Our certified teachers uncover skill gaps, address specific needs, and help students realize greater academic success and increased confidence. We're enrolling now. Individualized after-school tutoring in reading, math, history, elementary math, algebra, geometry, calculus, high school science, and study skills. For a free consultation, call 203-655-3276 or email gmcsylvan at gmail.com. You are watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. Nearly half a million viewers enjoyed our broadcasts in the first five months. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Jessica Murren, Advertising Director, at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. We're back on this Thursday edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network, and I have a special guest joining me, a return guest, Michael Dominic of Make-A-Wish Connecticut. And we're here, Michael, because Wishes in Flight campaign is underway. The HAN well Network and Make-A-Wish have teamed up on this. We have, and we're so grateful to be a part of this with you guys. Um, this is the first time we're launching it, so it's our first hopefully, you know, yeah. annual. Yeah, um, so basically the concept is 70% of our wishes involve air travel. Um, and that this year will be well over 150 kids um, wow. and their families. So um, people can donate their unused airline miles on participating airlines, and we can use those to offset our travel costs, which is our biggest expense every single year. So. Tell me where some of the Wish Kids want to go. And I know we have a bunch of photos just of some of the great wishes you've been able to grant. We do. I mean, over the years, it continues to get more and more incredible. Uh, the most popular travel wish is to go to Walt Disney World. What of little course. kid doesn't want to go to Disney? Um, but we've got kids traveling internationally now, too. Um, young girls who want to go see the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Wow. Uh, we have a young, we have two kids going in the recent future that want to go uh, take the channel from London to Paris. Uh, kids that want to go out to California and meet their favorite movie star. 
um, kids that want to go to Alaska and be a part of the Iditarod. I mean, I, we've wow. literally seen and heard it all, um, but with that be, uh, comes an expense um, with airline travel. Right, and the airline travel must be one of the biggest expenses. It is. Um, so like I said, 70% of our wishes will involve air travel, um, even if it is I wish to meet. A lot of times you have to go to where they are to meet them. Yeah. Um, and we send the whole family, which is an average of four to five tickets per wish. So 150 wishes times four to five. I and mean, we're talking about 600, 700 airline tickets a year. Wow. And that's just in Connecticut alone. Wow. And so airline miles, something that maybe people don't even realize or pay attention to how many airline miles they have. So how can they donate those? It's simple. We try to make it simple because mm -hmm. we know it's, um, it's a huge help on our end and we want to make it easy for the donor. Um, so you can just visit our campaign site, which is ct.wish.org slash HAN network. Um, and right there is a step-by-step -step direction. Um, if you have United or Delta miles, we take them right there through our portal. If you have JetBlue, Southwest, or American Airline miles, it'll direct you to their websites. They have their own systems set up, but they still donate miles back to Make-A-Wish. Now, all of the children that you guys grant wishes for are dealing with serious, life-threatening medical issues. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That's correct. And it is a common misconception that our kids are terminal. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily the case. Um, it's for kids with life-threatening conditions, like you said. Um, but with, you know, Make-A-Wish has been around for 36 years, and uh, Connecticut's been around for 30. And um, with advances in medicine, and we like to think we play a, a, a small part in this too, a lot of our kids go on to beat their condition and they lead strong, healthy lives. Which is amazing. And you know, we should say yesterday on our show CT Pulse, we had on two moms who both of their children have serious seizure and medical issues. And both of them had been granted wishes by Make-A-Wish CT. And they just went on and on about you guys and how wonderful you are. And they talked about kind of the struggle with a child with serious medical issues, how stressful life is. It is. And it takes, it takes the whole family off course. I mean, so the child's diagnosed, and obviously your heart goes out to the family, as it will always. Um, but with those hospital stays becomes juggling schedules so that the other kids, you know, maintain a relatively normal life. And with that comes parents never seeing each other. And it's just, it's such an emotional trauma on everybody. So when you can say, what is this one true wish? And it is the child's wish, but then when they get back or whether they have a playroom put in, you constantly are hearing about how much it meant to the brother or the mother or the father. It was just a week away. We got to forget about doctors and medical treatments and things like that. And we got a chance to be a family again. And no matter how many times we hear that, it's, it doesn't get old. It's not the same because you're hearing it from a different family and a different experience. And it's just, it's really, it's warming to know that you played a small part in, in their lives during a difficult time. Yeah. And we should say the readers of all our HN Network community newspapers are going to be able to hear some of those stories because throughout the month of April we're going to be running some stories about some of these kids that have had these wishes granted. That's true. That's why I didn't want to get into too much detail on some of those wishes because <laughs> yes. you'll be hearing about some of them and they're from the towns uh, right around here that, and we were so fortunate to have this opportunity to share those stories through, you know, through the HN Network. It's been a great partnership and we're excited. Now, Michael, how many wishes are we going to grant this year? We are on track for 240 wishes in Connecticut wow. uh, versus 209 last year. And in the six years I've been here, that's up from 125. So the wish counts keep growing, which means the need for support keeps growing. And, and that's why we're so grateful to be here and have the opportunity to, to reach out. That's great. One more time, tell people how they can donate their H A N, uh, The HAN Network Wishes in Flight campaign, and it's at ct.wish.org slash HAN Network. Thank you so much, Thanks Michael. And we're us. so excited about this campaign. I'm glad. <laughs> All right. Well, we are going to take another break. When we come back, John Kovach is going to join me, and we're going to take a look at the front pages of our papers this week, coming up after this. Join the HAN Network and Make-A-Wish Connecticut to help make travel wishes come true for local kids with life-threatening medical conditions. Donate your unused airline miles to the HAN Network Wishes in Flight campaign. Over 70% of wishes granted involve travel, and your unused airline miles can help make kids' dreams become a reality. Plus, once you donate your miles to Make-A-Wish, they will never expire. Donate your unused miles and help the HAN Network share the power of a wish. A Better View Join Window Cleaning Plus has been cleaning glass all over Connecticut for over 20 years. They also specialize in cleaning chandeliers, mirrors, skylights, tiles, and will power wash anything that needs cleaning. They hold an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and are fully insured and bonded. When you deal with a better view, you're dealing with the best, not the rest. Call today for a free estimate, 203-284-8836, or visit them online, abetterviewcleaning.com. 
Walter Stewart's Market in New Canaan is your time-saving local shopping destination for the best of spring. Find many of your favorite products, from great specials on everyday items to the freshest organic produce, artisanal cheeses, and grass-fed steaks. Drop off your knives to be sharpened, grab a beautiful bouquet of spring flowers, and stop in next door for a wine tasting. Plus, their personable staff is always ready to lend a helping hand. So stop in to Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, today, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. What's happening up in Hartford and what's trending in the nutmeg state? Join Kate Chaplinski and Josh Fisher on CT Pulse Live Wednesdays at 12.30 to find out. We talk to the leaders and newsmakers while breaking down the stories you should be paying attention to each week. With the help of HAA's editorial cartoonist Doug Smith, we take a humorous look at the news of the week. We talk about everything you were told you should avoid bringing up in polite company. CT Pulse Wednesdays at 12.30 on the HAA Network. We're back on your coffee break, and since it's Thursday, John Kovach is joining me, and we're going to take a look at our front pages this week. John, I missed you while we were out on the FCAC tour. We you guys did do front pages. You guys did such a great job with that. I mean, I'm watching the interviews, oh, and, the interviews and posting some of that stuff. Yeah. And, it, and I actually, about a, about a week ago, happened to be with somebody who is a coach at one of the schools in the FCAC and was raving to the people we were with about, oh, these guys go around, and they, and it was just so cool to hear how excited yeah. the kids get. Well, I love it, because I actually get to see how wonderful and really, like, polite and sweet and smart all of these students are that come through. I mean, they're really the best, and they always impress us, so. They really. Very it, cool. It, very impressive stuff by, by all of those people, and the schools and the FCAC. Yes, definitely. But now let's move on to front pages. John, what are you looking at? I'm looking at the Darien Times, and having been an EMT, I'm interested in this ongoing EMS saga in Darien, where they are recommending now paramedics, which they don't have, they have to call in, and changes in dispatch. And a fascinating story by Susan Schultz about senior housing and how senior housing is counted toward affordable housing under state statute. And it's causing a little bit of debate, even friction, in Darien, and I think it will in other towns as well. And uh, their front page, a photo I think we're all kind of sick of, and that is <laughs> snow. What have you uh, got, Kate? All right. Well, I have a photo I'm way more sick of looking at, which <laughs> is on the front page of the Milford Mirror. Uh, Jill Dion, the wonderful reporter that she is, uh, got some photos and did a very interesting and important story about how wipes are clogging the sewer system in Milford and everywhere. Uh, and she took some photos of kind of what that does to the system and how those flushable wipes are a big problem in Milford and beyond. And another story that we've been talking about uh, a lot this week was the state saying no to reviewing the placement of a medical marijuana facility in Milford. The mayor there raised some concerns, and uh, the Department of Consumer Protection has said it has already reviewed that thoroughly and will not review it once again. And finally, school officials say policy is not changing, just being clarified on law or foreign. A revised policy would leave no choice about where students would attend. In Easton, there is discussion about summer arts festivals, which would, could require some action by the Planning and Zoning Commission, so that's an interesting story there. And Nick's Night, which is a fundraiser, uh, great photo there of kids on stage doing some improv. This benefit is Friday, April 8th, that's at 7 o'clock at Joel Barlow High School, and it's a comedy show to benefit Nick Tissio, who is a Barlow student battling leukemia, and his family. Uh, unfortunately, Nick had a recurrence last year. This will help with medical bills, et cetera. So Nick's night, if you can get out there and you're in East and a good cause to support over at Joel Barlow. Hmm. All right, well, I'm taking a look at the Ridgefield Press and a beautiful wildlife photo by Tom Nash. Uh, a red fox was spotted trotting down the middle of Ivy Hill Road Monday morning, unconcerned about being photographed. Looks like it also had some breakfast in its mouth yeah, there. Yeah, it had breakfast. <laughs> But it's really an incredible photo with a little bit of snow on the ground there. Beautiful shot. And an interesting story by Tony Spinelli, which I want to read more of. But a Ridgefielder who was arrested for leaving the scene of a car accident spent six days in jail. And he spoke to Tony Spinelli about how he feels the system is broken and how this whole thing happened. Uh, so very interesting there. I know I'll be reading more on that. I want to read that, that because yeah. it, you never hear... 
really from the inside. No, and, often and, people don't want to talk after no, they being don't. charged with a and, crime. And uh, kudos to Tony uh, for getting that. New Canaan, we can see more of what we're all sick of, and that's snow. Yeah, snow. <laughs> it's a pretty picture of some snow it's on spring picture, flowers. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I, don't, I, I love snow. I, I really do. In its time and in its place. And it's fishing season. It's, let's move on. Uh, a lot of charter revision coverage in New Canaan where there are some discussion about private meetings and also some changes where the first selectman in New Canaan, which is a very powerful position, uh, could lose the chairmanship of the Board of Finance and the tie-breaking vote on the Planning and Zoning Commission. All right, taking a look at the Wilton Bulletin, something we talked about on Coffee Break this week. Uh, a women's club there raising $30,000 for the Norwalk Trail, the River Valley Trail there. Very cool. Jeanette Ross also had some great video that is on WiltonBulletin.com from that. And I know a big story that Rob has mentioned, uh, Wilton mourning the loss of former football coach Tom Fujitani. So unexpected, and I, and I knew Tom, and, and just a... a a sad time for all of those involved in football in Fairfield County. Uh, in the Reading pilot, you see the cut of $225,000 from the school budget, but what's getting more attention virally are some things that the Georgetown Fire Department has done. One, a satirical calendar to raise funds, and they also did a video that I've seen shared by people I know who are in the fire service as far away as southern New Jersey, mm -hmm. in which they quiz residents as to how much equipment costs. And it's a very enlightening if you don't know those things. So that's going on on the front page of the Reading Pilot. All right, taking a look at the Trumbull Times. Uh, the Trumbull Town Council approving a sewage treatment settlement. That's been going on for years and years, so more details on that in this week's paper. And as well as uh, First Selectman Tim Herps giving his State of the Town address and highlighting some reduced taxes and saying that Trumbull has become a community of choice. So, a lot of news there. Story in Weston that's gotten a lot of coverage. The uh, developer has withdrawn an application to change the zone and create an active adult community district in Weston. That, I believe, was unfolding as they went to press. So Gregory Menti with a good story there in the Weston Forum. And they are continuing a series about farms in Weston. And you don't really think about how many people are involved in the agriculture economy in towns like Weston and Easton. Hmm. That's very cool. I've been looking for some great local honey. Maybe I'll go stop by there. I may have to, too, because I think it does work with allergies. Yes, I they do, do say that. local honey is great for allergies. All right, well, taking a look at the Stratford Star, uh, more time for the Stratford Stage Group. They will not be up against a deadline in their quest to secure a grant to use for renovating the Shakespeare Theater. So there's no firm deadline there. They have some more time. And Melvin Mason has some nice spring-like photos. No snow on the front page of the Stratford Star this week. Yeah, it's actually an interesting story how the mild winter resulted in some savings for public works. Oh, and, I imagine. And, uh, I mean, what they need on that Shakespeare Theater is more time. Yes. There's been a lot of time. A lot of time. <laughs> in Lewisboro, uh, the 10th anniversary of the Golden Roads program of the Lewisboro Garden Club, and that is 75,000 daffodils planted wow. along roads in that Westchester County hamlet. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, well, taking a look at the front page of the Shelton Herald, uh, education and law enforcement teaming up to fight against the opioid problem in the area, and they have their first event planned for May 9th, as well as the Family Justice Center opening up uh, its new offices, which we were talking about a lot uh, this week on Coffee Break. So some very cool news there. And in Monroe, let's not leave a cliffhanger. The budget passed on the first try. How often does that happen? A mere 76 <laughs> votes, but Monroe has a budget on the first try. We've seen that process drag on into August. <laughs> all right, John. Well, those are all our front pages, but we still have a lot coming up today, including Yankee Fisherman. Yankee Fisherman. We are going to talk about stocking and about the opening of the season and discussions as to whether it's a good idea to stock as heavily as we do. And just some fun video I got at the Fairfield PAL Trout Derby this weekend. Oh, cool. And of course, HN Arts and Leisure at 2 o'clock, so be sure to check that out. And your coffee break will be back tomorrow at 11. See you then.